and hello YouTube this is Thomas Judge back once again with another YouTube reading guide series today is video 04 which is my fourth proper video walking through the top cow artifactiverse or as some as you may consider it the witchblade universe to create this reading guide I have read the 902 single comic issues that comprise the entire artifactiverse and more besides and I've used that knowledge to build the internet's most detailed reading map for this unique corner of modern comics now, during the series, I'll be using terms such as volume with a big or small v, and I'll be referring to comic readers that are type P or type J, or I'll be referring to other companies and comic lines in passing. This can all seem a little overwhelming, but if you do need more guidance on what this all means, check out the introductory video in this series, which is numbered 00, and that will be explaining all of these points. The link for that is in the description below. So with no further ado, let's go here. This is the entire Top Cow Artifactiverse arranged into a reading map. Today we're going to be continuing our walkthrough of the Artifactiverse by continuing the section that I've entitled the Origins Era. Please remember this is my own name for this era of the Artifactiverse and not an official title by any means. Okay, let's begin. So last time we, we discussed the first 25 issues of Witchblade, which you can see up here, and then we pause so we can move over and consider the first 40 issues of The Darkness, which you can see here off on the left as I scroll down to about here. Well, today we're going to be moving back to Witchblade, you'll be glad to know. However, before we can move back into Witchblade properly, we're going to have to make a further detour all the way to the right over here to Tomb Raider. Now, let's talk about this tomb raider was the original um this is the original series of tomb raider published by top cow comics top cow was their original publisher keep in mind this is before the tomb raider reboot that made it all gritty and realistic and that reboot spawned its own comics which were published by dark horse comics and i'm sure they're very good but they're not part of this comics universe however back in the 90s when top cow published it tomb raider was much more flamboyant and frankly comic booky heroin as you'll see by this 50 issue series so let's start here at the top of the reading order for here. Uh, we have this particular trade collection, which is called Saga of the Medusa Mask. It only collects issues one to four. So yes, it is very slim. It's also very out of print and very expensive. Next is the second trade collection, which is called Mystic Artifacts. That collects issues five to 10, similarly out of print. And then we have the third trade collection, which is called Chasing Shangri-La, collecting issues 11 to 15. The fourth and final trade collection for the main series is called Pieces of Zero and collects issues 17, uh, sorry, 16, 17, 19 and 20. So it doesn't collect issue 18. Now, after this, we actually get taken into a long string, as you can see here, of uncollected Tomb Raider stuff. Hence all the dotted circles. Um, now, that includes issue 0, issue 0.5 issue 18 and issues 21 to 50. You'll see here that what I've done is I've split them out as the issues before 25, which is in this weird little crossover event on the left, and then the ones after 25. Now I'm going to talk that through in a minute and so it will make sense, don't worry. Now before we actually move away from Tomb Raider, there's a couple of final things we need to keep in mind. The first one is up here. Now the, between the first collection there, Saga the Medusa Mask, and the uncollected issues, there is a small trade collection called Trouble Seekers. Personally, I think it fits in best here, just round about after the first trade collection. And Trouble Seekers itself, as a trade collection, is actually massively out of print and contains four different Witchblade and Tomb Raider crossover issues, all of which have very similar names. So for clarity's sake, I'm going to show you the covers as I talk you through them. The first one is this, Tomb Raider and Witchblade 1998. Then it's this, Witchblade and Tomb Raider, issue 0.5. Then it's this one, Witchblade and Tomb Raider number one, also from 1998, but the names are the opposite way around from the other issue we just talked about. This works well as a standalone, but it's actually a key issue that we'll mention later in video six, at the end of the Origins era, when we talk about Tales of the Witchblade. And then the fourth and final issue in this Trouble Seekers collection is called Witchblade and Tomb Raider 2. It's from 2005. It's terrible as it contains the Witchblade one-shot issue called Demon and then a Tomb Raider one-shot issue as well. So it's not really a crossover between the two characters so much as two short unrelated co uh, comics for each of them collected together. Anyway, getting back to the map, here's the cover of the trade collection. These issues 
um, are all collected in here, and this chronicles the beginning of the friendship between Sarah Pizzini, holder of the Witchblade, and Lara Croft, or the Tomb Raider. Now, it is important to read these, otherwise you'll really have no idea how these two characters even know each other. These issues chronicle their first meeting, and as I say, whilst one of these crossovers is a prelude to a later story we'll discuss in video 6, it's also readable here. Alright, let's pan back from that for a second. Um, one final thing to consider about Tomb Raider, for now at least, is the number of Tomb Raider one-shots that exist during this era. Now, remember, this is the top count era of comics for the character, not the grittier, rebooted Dark Horse publications. And as such, there's lots of one-shots, lots of crossovers. They're all pretty fun, but very few of them tie into the wider artifactivists. Some of them do, and you can just read them here. So let's just jump into all the Tomb Raider one-shots. I'm going to list them in no particular order, simply because you can read them in any particular order. Uh, none of them are especially good, and whilst they might refer to a few characters from the artifactivists, this is all pretty inconsequential. First up is Arabian Nights. Here's the cover here. Uh, next is Epiphany. Here's the cover. Next is Tomb Raider Origins. Don't get confused, this doesn't have to be read before anything in particular. It's not really an especially important kind of prequel thing. Next up we have Takeover, which is okay. Next up we have Tomb Raider Darkness. Now this is a nice little crossover with Jackie Estacado as the Darkness. The cover is great, but the story is average and it has no impact on anything. Uh, and the last one that I'll mention is called The Greatest Treasure of All. And here's the cover. Phew, back to the map here. And with that out of the way, let's get back to the reason that we're all here. Let's be honest, guys. We're here for the Witchblade. So last time we finished here with um, the third trade paperback collection, which had issue 25 of Witchblade. And at the time of the making of this video, that was the last issue of Witchblade available in a collected edition for quite a while. We are now about to head into a long stretch on Witchblade issues that only exist as single issues, whether you're buying them physically or digitally. As I've done previously when we discussed the darkness, I'm going to arrange these by story arc, but keep in mind these are arbitrary groupings that I have created at my own whim. That's why all these circles here, as you can see going down, all have dotted edges. These issues are uncollected, but I'd recommend you read them in the groupings that I'm going to go through. Okay, so first up, we'll start off with a story arc that I just call Loose Ends. Um, this is just issues 26 to 35, although I will point out that issue 0.5 um, goes between issues 31 and 32. Issue 0.5 is a wizard exclusive you can see here. This is what the cover looks like. It's a very tough one to get hold of. It's not especially good or useful, but just so you know, it goes between issues 31 and 32. Next up is an arc that will be familiar to anyone who saw the previous video. So this is the story arc I like to call the Necrobi. This was discussed last time, but I repeat myself here. It's a slightly complicated one. Not only does it involve a crossover with Witchblade and Darkness, this crossover comes in the form of two one-shots, and then there's also another one-shot you need to read before that, which I might mention briefly. So basically, here are the covers. This arc requires you to read, firstly, Witchblade 36, then Witchblade Darkness, don't get that name confused with this, which is Darkness Witchblade. And I'm showing you the picture so you don't get confused. Tracking them down as single issues, it is easy to get confused when the names are so similar, but just the opposite of each other. And then the final one here in this story arc is Darkness 28. And for my money, it's slightly more satisfying if you read this, if you preface all of these with Batman Darkness, which is a one shot as well. But if you're reading this before you actually dive over into darkness issues, you can ignore the Batman darkness if you're just doing a Witchblade read through and you're not really paying attention to Jackie Estacado. Anyway, let's jump back to the map. Here we are. Now, at this point, um, we then have some random filler issues. That's issues 37 and 39. These are not good issues. You can ignore them. Um, and then next, which which blade kind of goes through a bit of kind of like a soft revamp. Top Cow kind of realized they were wasting the momentum of what had been a successful series up until then. And so there's a high profile change of writer and artist. This is what I call the Pyromancer arc. And that's from issues 40 to 53. This brings on board writer Paul Jenkins and artist Ko Cha. And overall, it's a big improvement from the terrible filler issues that precede it. Unfortunately, this momentum is not maintained. The arc wasn't good enough to warrant its own collected edition. And so we come to the next arc, issues 54 to 57, which I call the Return of Torah no Shi. It's very middling. Now this is where things get kind of freaky. 
One of the big events during the Origins era of the Artifactiverse is this one, which is called Endgame. This was meant to be a really clever end of the world story that brought together lots of characters whilst it also helped launch several new characters. The intention behind it was good, and without it we wouldn't really have the Artifactiverse at all. But the event itself was a bit of a mess. Top Cow promoted it quite heavily at the time, with banners on the top of several issues and several lines saying Endgame, or Road to Endgame, or Endgame Fallout. In many cases, these were totally misleading and the issues themselves had nothing to do with Endgame, but we'll touch on some of those in a second. So I'm going to show you the covers for the issues that are in Endgame. So let's start here. This is Witchblade 58. Then there's Witchblade 59. Then there's Tomb Raider 25. Yes, this is one of the uncollected Tomb Raider issues we mentioned earlier. It is drawn by Michael Turner as a one-off. And this is why we split the Tomb Raider issues for the uncollected before issue 25 and the uncollected after issue 25. It looks stunning, but the story completely belongs here and makes no sense when you're reading the Tomb Raider run at all. However, having said that, the events of Endgame provide the setup for issue 26 of the Tomb Raider ongoing series. So on that note, issue 24 of Tomb Raider is branded Road to Endgame on the cover. Ignore that. It's not got anything to do with this. Anyway, after that, you then have Witchblade 60. And you then have Evo. Evo is sometimes called Evo Issue 1, but there was never an issue to you, even though they intended to spin it off into a series. This is what the cover looks like. It's a one-off Top Cow co comic that pins together this entire event. But like I say, it doesn't spin off into a series. So don't let the Evo Issue 1 confuse you into thinking that you need to find Issue 2. And then finally, Endgame ends with this issue, which is Witchblade 61. Back to the map here. So what was Endgame? Well, Endgame was a beautifully drawn, sci-fi, time-traveling, militaristic, mythic mess of a story that went nowhere. And that is all I have to say. We're almost done for now, but before we close, I just want to mention one final thing in order to close out the two Raider comics here on the right. Uh, we're going to leave Witchblade at issue 61 for this video, but I just want to finish off the Tomb Raider stuff. So... We finished talking about that when we got to those uncollected issues you can see here, we're issues 21 to 24. And now we know we can read these up to issue 25, then read that as part of the Endgame event. After Endgame, feel free to come back here whenever you like and finish this run all the way up to issue 50. However, there are a few issues quite late on in that run that do mention some of the characters and series we're going to meet in the next video. Whilst it's not a big deal if you just read these issues anyway, after all, Tomb Raider is all about meeting mysterious people and having mysterious magical artifacts. But if you do want to meet these characters first, then be aware that they're mentioned at issues 46 to 58. So if you like, you can read up to issue 45 and then come back here later after meeting the characters we'll introduce in videos 5 and 6. Finally, if you're a com Witchblade completionist, and I assume you are, you should be aware that there is one more Witchblade Tomb Raider crossover you could read around now. This lives over here, if I go up here, into this part. And the reason it lives there is because it's actually a three-way crossover with the series Fathom. And whilst I've placed it before Endgame, its placement is actually pretty random, to be honest. All we know is that by this point, Sarah and Lara are friends, so it could otherwise be really read wherever you like. It has no impact on anything. Just to remind you about Fathom, by the way, when, Mike, when Michael Turner left Witchblade after issue 25, he headed off to launch his own comic called Fathom, which eventually formed the core of his new imprint called Aspen. This is definitely not the series of videos where I'll discuss Aspen comics, but I will mention this. The first volume with a big V of Fathom ends with a crossover event between Witchblade, Tomb Raider and Fathom that spans Fathom issues 12 to 14. You do not need to have read all of Fathom to jump into this event, as long as you're relaxed and type J about it. Personally, I would recommend reading the full run of issues, um, so 1 to 11, here on the map, uh, to understand a bit about Fathom, and then issues 12 to 14 here on the map to read the crossover with Witchblade and Tomb Raider. The reason I say this is Fathom is a fun and beautiful series. Um, however, whilst the Fathom universe carries on for easily another 100 issues or so of series and miniseries, we're not going to touch on that in this series of videos. Okay, guys, I hope that was clear. We've covered all of Tomb Raider. And we've covered all these little spin-offs and things with Fathom and so on. Um, so please come back next time to carry on with Witchblade and what's going on there. As always, this map is available on my website for you to download free of charge. If you want to download it or print it out to follow along, please do so. It covers 902 issues, so I don't blame you. 
As always, please like, comment and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter where I tend to post a one tweet daily review of whatever I've read that day. Given I read on average around half a dozen comic issues every single day, it's a great way to see what I'm up to and to get an idea for what future videos I'm planning. If you want to support the channel, please do head over to Amazon and pick up the first volume of my pro superhero novel, No Gods or Kings. It costs less than a dollar and it's a story about a world like our own, but where superhumans are a reality and how the world changes as a result. It's planned as a series of nine novels. The first four are already out and they're free if you have Kindle Unlimited. It would mean a huge amount if you were to leave a review of them. And if you'd like to read a free excerpt of the first book, that can be found on the same website as this map, which is nogodsorkings.com. The link for that is in the description below. Until next time, everyone, stay classy.